You hear it all the time. Dobermans are different. Dobermans are unique. Dobermans just aren't like other dogs. But is there actually anything really different with how you train a Doberman versus how you train any other breed? Yes. Please don't train a Doberman like any other breed, please. Today, guys, I'm helping you out with this. We're talking about five common dog training techniques and approaches that you should never do with a Doberman because they just aren't going to work, or worst case, you might actually end up making your Doberman's behavior worse doing these training techniques. And as a bonus, I'll also give you two very important training tips that are specific to Dobermans and will help you just so much with this breed. These are tendencies of this breed that you can really use to your advantage during training. We're about to make your life a whole lot easier and maybe even save you from causing yourself a lot of problems with your Doberman right now on Doberman Planet. All right, the first technique we're gonna talk about that you shouldn't use with a Doberman is that some trainers actually in the past have suggested keeping your dog really close to your side while you're passing other dogs on the street as a way of kind of addressing reactivity in your dog to other dogs. They say it provides your dog with kind of like a level of reassurance. It allows you to be in a controlling position and it helps them work through some reactivity. This is absolutely one technique that will get you into very deep water with a Doberman. Remember that Dobermans are a protection breed, and because of that, they do have a set of natural instincts that are just really geared towards that. For one, they're incredibly good at reading their circumstances from that protection standpoint. And if you have a tight grip, a really short lead, if you're pulling them in close to you, there's extra tension on your part, that really communicates to a protection breed like a Doberman that there's something to be fearful of that's approaching, especially if there's kind of a change in the air with your demeanor as that other dog approaches. If you do this, your Doberman's naturally gonna get a dose of adrenaline. In other words, their fight or flight instincts will kick off. And a Doberman is an intelligent, dominant protection dog, and now they know they can't run because they're real tight to you. So flight isn't an option anymore. The only option is to fight and this will make your Doberman's reactivity way worse. Don't do this with a Doberman. The best way to address reactivity with a Doberman, it's a combination of desensitization work to their specific trigger and increasing their focus and sense of purpose while on the walk, not by providing some sort of reassurance by pulling them in tight and holding them close to you. All right, the next one is not being the alpha or leader for your Doberman. I know I've heard it, the alpha theory has been debunked. The alpha theory has been debunked. I've heard it a million times, guys. And okay, we do need to address this first. It hasn't. It absolutely has not been debunked. Now, I know that might be triggering to some of you guys, but hear me out. What people mean, and many times they don't even know it, is the term alpha traditionally really just means the oldest members of a pack, of a wolf pack. Most packs are simply one family two parents, and then the puppies. So the oldest are the parents. They are called the alphas, the alphas of the pack. And they're basically never challenged for their role. This has been proven, this is a fact. They're almost never challenged. Yes, there are absolutely alpha wolves and alpha dogs in a pack or a family structure. When people say the alpha theory has been disproven, what they really mean is that the theory that the most dominant dog controls and leads the pack and they overthrow the leader of that pack for that position, that that has been disproven. And in that sense, yes, they're right. That doesn't happen. However, the father and the mother of the pack are the alphas and they aren't challenged. And your role with your puppy as the oldest should be that as the alpha. If the term alpha is just too triggering to you, feel free to say leader instead. Call it what you want, either term is fine with me. Now with some breeds who respond really well to different approaches, they might work great with you being more on their level and vaguely guiding them in certain directions in their behavior and what's expected of them. But with a very dominant dog like a Doberman, they will absolutely push your boundaries if you don't appear to them to be the leader, the one to look to for direction. If you appear to be, say, on their level, this is why individual training sessions where you work with your Doberman are just so important. Just like having very structured walks with correct positioning and communicating with your Doberman as they grow of what's expected of them. 
All these things will help put you in a position as being seen as a leader and will help communicate to your Doberman that you are there to provide that consistent direction. And when they start going through their juvenile delinquent stage around six to nine months of age, you'll have a far easier time if you're seen as a leader or the alpha or in the wolf world, it's kind of the parents of the pack. Another training technique that you should never use with a Doberman is using immediate treat rewards as redirects to stop undesirable behavior. This one could really get you into trouble. And okay, I don't like absolutes, so I won't say that there's no time when you might do this with a Doberman, but I'll say almost never. Okay, as an example, let's say you use those immediate treat redirects to say stop the behavior of jumping up on you then well with a doberman with their high intelligence they're not going to learn that they shouldn't jump up on you instead they're going to figure out and rightly so they're going to determine that one jump up on you equals one treat and that's often the serious problem with using a treat as a redirect for negative behavior with a smart dog like a doberman or let's say you have a barking problem and your dog trainer who trains all breeds of dogs tells you, hey, yell a stop command at them, call your dog to you and then provide a treat as a reward for coming to you. So in other words, your Doberman barks, you yell that come command, give a treat, the next bark they do, you do a come command, then a treat, then a come command and a treat and so on. Well, guess what? A Doberman will outsmart you if you dare to try this training technique with them. Instead of learning that they need to stop barking, They'll instead learn that barking a few times gets a call for some treats. And yes, you just reinforced your barking problem. Why? Because you're doing techniques that just don't work well on this breed. Next up is using highly adaptive training techniques. These will get you in very hot water with a Doberman. Trust me, with some breeds of dogs, maybe more passive breeds, taking an approach of like, well, I'll try this training technique and if it doesn't work, I'll do something else. That might work great, but not with a Doberman. There's no way this will work and you'll be setting yourself up for failure. Guys, I say it all the time. This is why it's so important that you work with a dog trainer who's familiar with Dobermans. For one, a Doberman is an incredibly intelligent breed and one of the most elite dogs in terms of trainability. Much of the time, you don't even need to change your technique. They're smart enough. They'll know what you're trying to communicate to them. In fact, changing your approach up multiple times on a Doberman will also communicate something to them. It's going to communicate that you're not the consistent leader and they will then attempt to push your boundaries and get what they want. Yes, they will attempt to train you. You may have heard this about Dobermans that they train their owners. Well, this is one way that this happens. Dobermans are very, very adaptable dogs. They know what you want. Trust me, it usually does more harm than good changing up a training technique on a Doberman multiple times. So please stop thinking that your Doberman doesn't know what you want or what you're asking of them. They know it does a lot of harm to keep switching it around. So this might work for other breeds, doesn't work for a Doberman. The next technique never to use with a Doberman is using the Yelp approach to address puppy biting and only using that. Now this is a common technique to stop puppy biting. Basically it's where the puppy's biting and nipping at your legs and you do a high pitch kind of yelp and you turn your back and you ignore the dog. Remember these dogs have tons of energy and tons of drive and they're super focused on you, their owner. So wrap that all up in one package and what does that mean if all you do is yelp and turn the other way when they're nipping and biting? It means relentless pursuing, nipping your pants, nipping your shoes when you're turning your back. It's just the fun of the chase and their working breed drive taking over. Using this as part of your system for addressing a Doberman's puppy nipping stage, that's fine, but there should be something else like using a calming technique or separating them if the nipping is just really relentless and you can't redirect them no matter what you do. Using that Yelp and then ignoring them technique as kind of your top tier way to stop puppy biting, might work for cute little fluffy lap dog breeds, but trust me, with a high drive dog like a Doberman, it's not gonna work. Okay, it's time for one of the really important pro tips for this breed specifically. Please don't rely on treats forever as your Doberman grows and they learn the behaviors and commands that you're teaching them. It is possible to become overly reliant on treats where your Doberman won't listen to you without treats being in hand. And with a Doberman, there's usually no need for it to be a permanent thing anyway. They love focusing on you, looking in your eyes and getting direct praise for their actions. Use that instinct to your advantage. Use praise as your reward. 
The exception here, of course, is when you're introducing a new command or when they're very young or something like that. That is totally fine. I do that all the time with Dobermans. I'm speaking more to not using treats and becoming reliant on them with commands that they already know very well and going into adulthood as they grow. That's when you should slowly start to wane off of treats. Okay, time for another really important pro tip for you. Calmness and consistency are key. Now, I know they are for a lot of breeds, but Dobermans read your emotions possibly better than any other breed out there. So be very conscious of what you are thinking and kind of what's going on in your head and what you expect to happen as you train. If you are leash training a Doberman, for example, and you expect there to be a reactivity problem as you approach another dog, there almost certainly will be. However, if you expect everything's gonna go really well, your body will actually naturally just slightly relax. Your shoulders might come down a bit, they might go back, uh, you'll be looking straight ahead, not hunched over looking at your Doberman, the leash might slack up a little bit, all signs that your Doberman will read, and guess what? it's very unlikely that you'll have an issue. Why? Because your doberman was reading, engaging your body language and apprehensiveness all along as you're walking. So remember, a doberman is incredibly unique as compared to any other breed of dog. You've heard it a million times, and yes, it's true. So if you end up getting a trainer or animal behavioralist, just please make sure that you always seek out one with doberman specific knowledge, or at the very least, working breed knowledge. And if you need a Doberman specific place to start, head on over to my website, DobermanPlanet.com, and you'll find a ton of resources there to help you out with your Doberman journey. And all of it is specific to this breed. Don't forget to subscribe down below this video, make sure all notifications are turned on, and check out the resources below in the description area of this video and really all of our videos. You really can't get too much help with your dog, especially Doberman specific help. Thanks so much for watching. Keep being great Doberman Breed Ambassadors. Take your dogs with you everywhere that you can, and I'll see you next time.